Welcome to the Automators Podcast with your host, Jackie Stook and Joe Glines. In today's podcast, we're going to cover seven steps how to push past the plateau and increase your learnings. Yeah, make sure you move past that plateau. Hey, everyone, it's Joe Glines here out of Dallas, Texas. Yeah, and Jackie Stook here from Copenhagen, Denmark. And uh, welcome to the podcast today. Uh, this was a pretty interesting one to me, the seven steps and how to push past your plateau. And so the, now those of you listening, if we were, you know, if we, this was a video, it'd be so much easier. But, um, you know, generally speaking, I think most people think of learning as a regular slope going up in a diagonal of like, I just keep learning and learning, and learning, and then I'm kind of done, right? In reality, um, Jackie, you want, you want to tell your, I love your analogy for it, for the Mountain climbing? Yeah, I, I, I'd use that. And, and of course, mountain climbing as an example is like you start at, at the bottom somewhere and, and you would climb or you'd uh, rise somehow to a base camp somewhere where you would, uh, depending on the attitude you want to actually get to, you might get supplies, find a team, whatever you do. Uh, get accustomed to what you're doing, getting ready, and then you would start your first descent. And then you'd probably, depending on the altitude you want to reach, how good you want to get, you probably end on some kind of forward base or whatever they're called. I'm not a mountain climber, so I don't know what all of them are called, but I do know that you actually take it in steps because at some point you need to... Um, get accustomed to whatever altitude you're at, you need to stay there for some time. And if, if it's a plateau, you would stay there, use your skills at that level, do whatever project you're working on, you might have learned some specific skills to get there and you'll be using the tool, you'll be using the skills you've got up till now, but you're not really learning anything new, you're just stationary, you're on a plateau. Whereas you need to use the time on that plateau to get accustomed to the atmosphere or get to know what to do next. So you can actually continue your climb. So, yeah. Yeah. So to convert that back into how it's relevant for us, because you're spot on. Like we, we, well, what I would even say is before we get to the mountain, we were going to the mountain, which is this long, flat thing. And then we finally get there and we go up a bit. But then we, we stop and then we, we stay at that level for a while, right? Now, this, it equates to learning anything. It's the same thing, right? Like we, we, we start off from scratch, we learn a little bit, and then we use those, our skills that we develop there for a while. Um, and this is where it could be very interesting. That, that time frame could be very long or it could be somewhat short, but it's not a linear. You don't just keep learning, 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 because physically or mentally, we can't handle that. Right. It's just not possible to just keep solid learning. Um, our brains at some point shut, not shut down, but we don't retain it. Right. Is the problem is, is you keep going, but um, you end up losing a lot of it. So that's why I was trying to think of a way to explain it uh, uh, in that sense. But I, I like the climbing analogy. Um, but what you can do is shorten your length of time on that plateau. Right. So we have seven steps to help you kind of um, shorten the length of time that you spend on that plateau. Yeah. Uh, let, let's get into the first one here. The first one is an easy one is, you know, you could hire a coach or a mentor, right? Or, or I shouldn't say have them. I should say have a mentor, right? So you can hire someone to, to do some work with you or, or just have a mentor and ask them for direction. Um, that's a great way to, to, you know, level up and get, get insights on what you're working on by someone who you're paying or have a strong relationship with, to, you know, on what you're doing. Yeah, that method is one that really works. You, you've seen it in all kinds of fields uh, throughout, yeah, I'd say history, right? Using someone who is already past your level or close to it at least, or has another way of thinking that can work really well by having a coach or a mentor, that's for sure. The second one I mentioned would be uh, working with a co-writer, someone who you're collaborating with, someone else with different experiences, right? Maybe even more than you, but at least has different ideas 
I had friends that had helped me through projects where I was like, mm, I don't know how to actually solve this part or, or I might be too unsure if, if I could do that or do this. And they they bottom it up and try different ideas, either because they didn't know the space, they weren't programmed, whatever, but just the idea of having different ways of moving past whatever obstacle I seem to be facing helped. They could ask me questions about the process. And by them doing that, I would either need to explain it to them and that would help me get past it. Or I'd show them or they'd somehow hit it on the nail and help me work past it. So that's one I like as well. Yeah, I, I and, and I'll I'll say like and I you know you and I have done it because you and I have very different skills and in, in how we look at things and we just think differently, right? Um, but with Isaiah's uh, and also with Maestri, I'll be doing stuff, and they're both of those, and you are too, Jackie, um, are far better programmers than I am. Especially though Isaiah's, I'll be working with him, and he's light years ahead of me, and he'll be working. And then he gets he's trying to figure something out, and he'll get stuck and be like, "Yeah, I don't know," and and I'll propose kind of, I want to say like an asinine idea. It's not quite that, but it's just a whole different way. Like, what if we did it this way? And, and so that breaks him out of where he was thinking, right? And it just changes things. So for me, though, like, I'm learning from him on how to be a better programmer. I think he, to some degree, is learning from me to think outside the box, right? To not focus so much on, remember, there's 100 ways to skin a cat. Right. So, so yeah, it's a, it's a great one to find someone that you can work, work, work with directly. Um, now another one, it's very similar, but to get a, to get a peer, get, get someone to review your work for you. Right. Get someone that, that they actually, you know, know what they like and dislike get, get their feedback, give it to them, ask them to be critical, right. Um, critical yet gentle, right. There's no reason to get beaten up over it, but you, you really want, someone to take a critical look at what you've done and give you feedback on on, uh, on what you've done and come up with other ways to have solved what you did. That's what I usually do is say, here's anytime I have a project where I, I usually start it and then I give it to someone and I say, this is what I did, but but feel free as long as you come to the same you know solution in, in end game, right? Then great, right? I know people are much more advanced programmers than I am, so I don't get hung up on my way is the right way. But it, it's, I'll tell you, there's nothing more powerful than watching someone rewrite your code because you understand the goals and what you're doing. And when they re, refactor it, it's just, it's so much easier to, to learn in that situation. That's also one of the things that we do in the second hour of the webinars that we have every month, where, where we let people come in with their code, with their issue, and uh, it might be one of us that actually tries to work on it, but it also might be others in the actual webinar who feel that they have uh, something that can really help there. And I think we've done it many times over now where people have been um, brave enough to show their thing. And right. sometimes they're at a, uh, medium level, sometimes at a, at a new level, and sometimes at an advanced level. Sometimes we're hard pressed to to cover what they've done because they've gone into something that we haven't done before. And other times, they've done something fairly simple, and we might have a hard time of doing something that's at their level because we might have done a project at some time where it was uh, more uh, involved and stuff like that. But we try, and because they and us are doing this dynamic work on a piece of code that makes sense for them, uh, I'm pretty sure it actually helps them quite a lot. Yeah, and, and just to reiterate, I think it's a really, you, you alluded to it, I don't think you quite said, spit it out that way, but to say, when we try to offer up a solution, we don't find the most advanced solution there possibly is and give it to them, because if they can't understand it, Right, that's missing the point, right? And that's that's the whole we I know Jackie and I are both on board with that one of like don't just develop code that someone is gonna use and not we love to teach. And if the yeah. person can't understand how it works, 
because who's going to support it? How are they going to fix it? How whatever, right? So that's why it's important to be able to give them a, a solution at their level or slightly above, and you you nudge them up. And that's the other really big thing, right? We don't we don't. It may seem like some people start here and then make these lightning jumps, but it's really rare. It really doesn't happen. Most people, when that happens, normally the case is they've already seen that solution like in a different language or some other instance and they can relate to it. And that's how they can get it so quickly because they can be like, oh, you know what? I have seen, I've done something very similar to that approach, but it was different, you know, different enough where they didn't put two and two together at first, but that's how they jump way jump ahead because they've actually already seen the solution just slightly different. Um, so yeah, don't, don't be... Don't be thinking that you're going to have these huge breakthroughs, right? I mean, it's don't get me wrong. Like learning objects to me was a huge breakthrough, but not in the actual skills, just on the the ability to be able to use them, right? It's like suddenly when you can use functions, like you're you're like, wow, holy cow! Suddenly you're so much better of a programmer. Yeah, and it, it works really well with our uh, fourth point: uh, deliberate practice, right? It, it's like finding a particular thing or skill that you need to improve and then focus on that. If, if you want to learn functions or if you want to learn to make a class or if you want to uh, get good at uh, doing whatever it might be with dog calls or whatever it could be, it could be all kinds of stuff. Find something low key that has that and start implementing it, uh, implementing it at um, in small incentives, but keep doing it. Right? Keep focus on that, and just deliberately using that specific skill to get better at it. So yeah, let's, at some point, let's, sorry, Jack. Yeah, let's jump back to the 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 climbing mountain climbing analogy. Right. Let's say you've gotten to a plateau and then you're getting right next thing, but you haven't learned a certain knot. Right. Do you think the best approach would be to doing every other knot in the world and one out of 100 doing that knot that you don't know? Or would you repeat that same knot you don't know over and over and over and over? Right. And that's the thing. It's it's a, a very purposeful. I'm trying to learn this skill, so I'm going to keep repeat doing it over and over and over until I can almost kind of do it in my sleep. Right. Where I don't have to think about it. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's a great point of focused, you know, on I'm trying to learn this thing and I'm going to find different ways to implement it over and over. Now, this is one of those things we often make jokes about, you know, like you know, how we use AutoHotKey. Well, it's, it's the, the tool we go to so much for almost everything because we know it, right? So should you always use that one tool? Probably not. But for our purposes, it, it, it you know, it works out fine. Um, in this case, though, it's okay to keep using that same skill over and over because your goal isn't to actually do the in project. Your goal is to learn that, you know, functionality or that skill, right? So that's what you're practicing on. So don't be afraid of like, hey, I, I shouldn't really be using objects in this way because, you know, there's a, a uh, I could use a SQL database for, for storing my data instead of dumping it into an object and doing this stuff. But if you're trying to learn objects, then it is the right thing to do, right? Um, yeah. I'd say my, my kids' teachers, both my uh, kids' English teacher or Danish teacher, whatever you'd like to call it, and math teacher uses stuff that, that resemble this. They have curriculums, new things that the kids need to learn, but they'll keep having them read, right? It, we, they always have homework or, or this daily task of reading just because they're learning um, letters you can't hear or whatever it might be they're working on currently. They still need to be reading every day, read, read, read. Or with my uh, son's math teacher, they're of course always moving the bar on what they're learning. Now it's geometry, now it's math, now it's uh, whatever. They are adding their mining zip. And at one point, when they don't use subtraction that much, the kids tend to forget it a bit because they're not using it for four months or whatever. And at that young age, that's that's a long time. And she then has extra online courses that they'll, the kids, they might get, I don't know, 25 special um, math 
questions online that they can answer throughout the week. Not because they had to, but because she can keep giving them stuff that they have moved past that doesn't get covered in class every week. So she can make sure that, oh, you have learned to actually add stuff together. You've learned to subtract stuff. You've learned to recognize squares. You've learned. So they can keep doing that. Um, so many yeah. things in life are a use it or lose it kind of thing, right? If you if you stop using it, it's amazing, you know, for the stuff. I mean, granted, I can get back on a bike, right? But other things that are cognitive stuff, boy, you really have to keep practicing at it, uh, which actually I think plays well into our next one, uh, which is really working longer and harder than you think you need to, right? Work extra hours, um, keep, you know, spend extra time and just get qual quantity does lead to quality over time, right? It, it just keep keep going at it. It's not the smartest, best approach, but it, it does work, right? In putting in, I remember reading a book from a guy who he he uh, he was saying how he had like, let's say 25 years of business uh, of uh, experience in market research. But he said in reality, because he worked like 80 hour weeks all the time, that's all he did was work. For, for like 20 years, he's like, really, I have more like 50 years of work, you know, research because I did like double what everyone else did. Um, and, you know, and he, he kept, he did, that's all he did was work and, and he was proud of it. And he was okay with, he didn't have a family. He was all right. But the point was he got to be a really top notch person because he just, he worked so much more. And it's one of the things, right? It's one of the resources that we have in, in here where I'm from. A lot of people, not everybody, but a lot of people are really, really good at working from, um, I don't know what you go usually call it, but from eight to five. Let's just say that. And, and that's the only time they will think about work in any sort of way. So if their coding is a part of their work, that will be the only time they do. If, like me, I got it to get um, maybe not ahead at work, but I wanted to remove mundane things from the task I was doing. And I was learning it at work and I loved it so much. But when I got home, I didn't really know what to use it on because I didn't have the data or the stuff right. that needed to be entered. But yeah. I still chose to find stuff. And of course, then it became kind of a hobby, right? But it still meant that I used it and I worked on it for way more hours than a work day. So I might have worked with code a hundred hours that week or whatever, uh, weeks and, uh, upon weeks, right? It, it's just a matter of you can get better even if you don't move that much. Just by putting in the work, you will still move some. Agreed. Yeah. And and that's where if you did have a mentor or any other person you can talk to and bounce you know, stuff, it, it amplifies everything, right? Like you can really, really increase that pace when you're going the extra mile, doing extra work, and you have someone that you can help kind of guide you, right? Or, or you do purposeful stuff, right? You tie those two things together and you're just going to skyrocket. Yeah, uh, yeah. I want to. I want to take the next one, Jackie. I'm sorry. I'm going yeah. to double dip here, but um, this one. It, it, this made me laugh because it says, you know, like start a, start a project with a mentor, or with a colleague, a highly experienced person that you can, you know, learn from. Like starting webinars or podcasts. Does that sound familiar at all to you, Jackie? <laughs> Absolutely does. Yeah, it, it's it, it's such a great point. It, it's like as as I also said with the earlier one, if, if you can find something, if, if you don't have the work for it, or if you don't have the task at, at work currently or whatever it might be, find someone else who, who likes or who has the same kind of um, uh, interest. Uh, yeah, interest, exactly, uh, in, in whatever it is that you're trying to learn and hook up with that. Like we had the very first one, have a mentor, all of these things, because if you use highly experienced people, they might not be more experienced than you, or they might not be better at certain points than you, but the different ideas from the earlier point as well, 
will help you just move along and just keep at it, keep your mind on it, keep the focus from earlier and keep working on it. it it's a really, really great point, Joe. Find someone you can start stuff with, projects, webinars, podcasts, almost you name it, whatever it might be, right? Yeah, it, you know, it, it's, it's like the, uh, the codecations I've mentioned I do with my friend, Dr. Cook, right? We, we often once a year have a, a little vacation. We know it's like three to, three to five days, somewhere in there, where we get together and we just, it used to be statistics that we were learning. And then it switched over to like auto hockey and, and programming. But um, it was just one of those things we both love to learn. You know, I, I don't know if I've mentioned this. I think I've mentioned it to you, Jackie, but... For years, Gabe, I, even when we don't do that, every week we're reading a book together or we're listening to a book and then we have a call to discuss what we've learned in that, you know, that week. And because we just have, we both love to learn and we have topics, we both pick a topic, we both are interested in learning. And when you have, it's like having a workout buddy, right? Like it's much more likely you're going to do it. It's fun. It's interesting. Find someone else or a couple of people, right? It doesn't matter. Um, and have regular interval meetings. Um, and it's, it's, it's what's great is it's really fun, but it actually helps you learn a lot too, right? Which is it's great. It's a win-win. Yeah, as you said yourself, a workout buddy, right? A, a code buddy, uh, uh, someone who has a, a close to your focus. Uh, so absolutely, that I can't emphasize that enough. How many times haven't I heard that if you don't have someone to run with, join a running group whatever, you might not know them, but just because they have a set time and date of when they do the running, you will do a bit more to actually show up. And, and if, if, they, if you someday don't show up, you know that they'll think whatever, uh, and that will make you show up that much more. And this is kind of the same thing. If you have someone you're actually working with, you might have slow periods but because they'll still come to you with whatever they have, they'll be able to uh, kindle whatever uh, thing um, you're kind of down on just because you'll keep at it. So yeah, yeah it's, it's great. It's a great one. Uh, the next one is peer review your own work from the past. I've, I've not done this a lot, but I've pre or reviewed a lot of other people's work. But when a project, I'm currently working on a project that has gotten that large, there's no way for me to not revisit stuff I've done over time because it just has so many different parts to it. So some things might be something I've not touched in a year. And then going back to it because something with the environment that's being automated has changed. Actually going back into it and reviewing it again, it helps immensely. I might be able to refactor it or something else, or I've already learned something different, or I want to implement something in a different way. But actually going back and looking at my own code from the past actually helps, both because I need to read my own stuff, but also because it can be a painful way, but a great way to see if I've really improved over time. So yeah, I, I would add to that. Um, and it's one, I think we, it'd be a good topic for us to do in a, in a podcast of understanding how batching, you know, when you group things together, a bunch of the same thing, same things, repetitive tasks together, you start to identify patterns that you didn't see before. Right. And you're like, oh, wow, look, I could do this and this, this when you see them together. Now, reviewing your own work, let's say you did something newer, you know, since then, and you go back to your old thing, you might have created, you know, found a new approach for something and didn't actually realize until you started working that thing from the past. That like, you know what, this new approach I just learned really replaces this whole way I used to approach this thing. Right. And, and, and it's, it's kind of getting into seeing how you do things over time, you know, in certain things you're doing going, oh, you know what? Yeah, this is, this is all really the same problem, right? And the problem is if you don't go back over the stuff, you don't end up seeing that that frequently. And that's, that's kind of the, the, the point of trying to find that stuff. I, I did actually come up with one more from your, the, the last one, the peer review. Um, 
was uh, it was which I, I love is it's it's tell everyone your goals, right? Because I think it was when you said if you don't go to a if you have like the workout buddy or the team that you're supposed to meet and you don't go, right? Like by telling them you're going to come or whatever, that you know you'll feel bad and it'll make you go. It's the same kind of purpose. Telling everyone your goals. I'm going to learn. I'm going to learn classes, right? I'm going to do this. It's, you know, you don't want to fall on your face when people tell you, ask you later, how's it going, right? So you kind of commit yourself. And by doing that, will force you to, to struggle through stuff that you might want to give up on. Yeah, I think that's one of the things that I've thought about before with like uh, open source stuff, uh, with, with people posting things to GitHub. They might have worked on that problem. It was interesting, or they wanted to see if they could do it, and they posted because they want the world to see that they were able to do it. But because it's now out there, they uh, released it, right? They, they didn't just sit on it. Uh, people will come in, they'll poke at it, they might find errors, whatever. Some people will see it as a chore to, to then try and make it work. Other people will just not care. But a few people will then actually need to apply themselves to actually give people um, what they um, set out to do. And right. so, yeah, it, it's a great one because if nobody knows that you wanted to climb the mount mountain and you didn't climb the mountain, <laughs> there, nobody would ever uh, care. Yeah. But if you actually said, Oh, I'm going to climb this mountain and you only made it halfway, you'll be there halfway and be like, I'm not going to tell everybody that I didn't make it, right? It will make you do just that little bit extra to try and make it happen. Right? And so this is going to be terrible because I just thought of another one. From what you just said, you're spot on. If you set deadlines, right, which I don't, overly i don't want to set stringent deadlines but if you don't have any sort of a deadline again that where the whole goal is to shrink the time that you're you're in those the plateau right and without deadlines it's going to be longer i mean i can guarantee you this by definition right but if you actually give yourself some sort of a deadline it doesn't really matter what it is just set one um it, it will help shrink that time frame it's one of the issues i've had with one of uh, a couple of my projects i'd say when i'm the only one working on them right um, I have kind of no deadlines because, hey, whoever is going to give me deadlines, then I might get, I have this good friend as well, as, uh, and he'd be like, but when will you get it done? He has no stake in it, right? It's just like, you know what? Promise me you'll have it done by the 5th of next month. And I'll promise him just because, hey, he can't sit there and say I won't get it done. Uh, and sure enough, on the 14th, I'll actually get it done, right? It, it's like, <laughs> who knows if, if it's be, it'll, it'll be like that. But yeah. I don't want to sit there and not having it done when I've actually promised someone. Right. And I'm, I'm too good at just not procrastinating, but breaking my own promises if it's just to myself. It's like... Right. Yeah, but you know, because it wasn't it doesn't really matter. Effort. It's just me, right? Uh, you know, and that's the whole I point of always get it done. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. It's yeah. like you you can't get uh, around it too easily, at least. Awesome. Well, I um, hope you guys enjoyed that. I, I think there's a lot of really good stuff in here. Again, we all learn in different. You know, the other you know the other thing I'd say is find different mediums. Make sure you know which one works for you. Right. Um, there's different the way I, I realized after listening to a podcast the last couple of days, and then I happened to watch it on YouTube and, and I, I knew this already, but my, when I watch something and hear it, I, it's so much easier for me to retain the information compared to when I listen to it. Um, it yeah. So find what works yeah, for you. Absolutely. The listening to things is a pa passive uh, thing you can do, but because you can simply listen to it, but you can still be shopping or whatever, right. you might not have the needed focus to actually remember what you're hearing. That's, that's the only downside. Right. So. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks, man. Good talking yeah. to you. Absolutely. Bye. Sure. Yeah, bye. We love reading your comments, that's for sure. So let us hear what you think. We love those likes and please do share.
If you enjoyed that episode of the Automators Podcast, you might also like this one. Hey, so 10 tips I wish I knew before I started coding. That's what we're going to cover today. That's right, Jackie. And I, I'm really excited because uh, when I first started coding, you really felt like I should know what I'm doing here. And, and it's we've outlined 10 tips I think are going to help a lot of people that are new to coding and to understand if I wish I had known them before I ever started programming. So let's get going. So if you enjoyed listening to that, make sure you head to pod.v-automator.com and take a look for it.